I'm Mustang Bob. Today we're going to talk about a problem any engine can have. It's called surging. I had this problem on this 1966 Mustang. This particular car is a C code, has a 289 V8, and it's also a rare color code, which is H, as in hotel, for Sahara Beige. It's a nice little coupe, and the engine puts out about 200 horsepower. So what was the problem? The problem was it was difficult to start. I had to spray in a lot of ether to get it going. And then it was running really rough. And it had a surging sound, kind of a room, 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 room. So what could that be? Let's go look at the engine and see if we can figure it out. I really hope that you'll take an interest in these old cars like I have. They're a lot of fun to own and a lot of fun to drive. And people really like to see them out on the road. So I try to keep mine running. I don't keep it in the garage. I take it places and talk to people about it. All right, so the surging problem. Anytime you have an engine problem, there's four things you need to consider. First of all, compression. In order to run right, the cylinders all have to have good compression. And how could there not be good compression? That's usually something pretty catastrophic, like a head gasket leak that could get water into the combustion chamber and you'd see it as white smoke out the tailpipe. Or it could have a hole in one of the pistons. And if that were to happen, you might get oil into the combustion chamber and that would come out as blue smoke when it burns. Those are really bad if that happens to you, requiring a lot of work to make the repairs. In this case, that's not happening. There's nothing coming out of the tailpipe. I'm just getting a surging sound. So we could probably rule out compression problems. So let's move on to number two. You need air coming in. And we can take off our air cleaner cover and take a look at the air filter. It's a little dirty, but it's okay. There's no obstructions in here. Here's your carburetor. We have direct airflow straight into the engine. So that's not gonna be the source of our problem either. So we move on to number three, which is gasoline. The gasoline comes from the fuel tank in the back, and it has a screen inside the gas tank. Then it flows up through a, a tube under the car, comes into the fuel pump here, and then up and into the carburetor. If there was a problem with that system, like say a diaphragm failed in the fuel pump, or if a fuel filter was plugged, you probably wouldn't run at all. You wouldn't be surging or hitting on maybe seven out of eight cylinders. So it's probably not fuel either. So that leaves the fourth item, which is ignition or spark. Here's the coil that creates the, the spark that comes down into the distributor cap. The coil is obviously working because the car is running. So that leaves us with the distributor cap, the spark plug wires, and the plugs themselves. So there's eight plugs, four on each side, eight spark plug wires. And in this high temperature environment, over time these plug wires will get brittle. And if they break, it'll take the path of re least resistance. The spark may jump to this cast iron block instead of going uh, to the plugs themselves. So what I did was I popped these two retainers. There's one on each side here on the uh, distributor cap turned it over, looked inside it, everything was fine. Uh, no obvious cracks or problems there. There's a rotor inside that goes around that distributes the, park, the spark to all eight of the spark plug wires and it looked like it was in good shape too. So then I said, well, let's take a look at the spark plugs and maybe pull a couple of the plugs out and see how they are. So this is a really good tool to use here. It's insulated and you can grab the end of the spark plug um, connector, the ones that are red here, and twist them a little bit and pull them out without damaging the spark plug wire. And you're not gonna get shocked if the car is running if you're using this insulated uh, tool. They're cheap and everybody should have one of those. You shouldn't just yank the spark plug wire out, you'll damage it. And so in this case, what I did was I pulled a couple of the spark plug wires and I pulled the plugs out and this was useful too. It's a 13 16 socket, but it has a little knuckle in it, which allows you to angle it to get around the exhaust manifold. In these Mustangs, you have this shock tower that's kind of in the way. This is a California car, so it has an air pump 
so you have the air distribution system that's kind of in the way too. Um, so this is a good investment to have something like this to just make it easier for you. So I pulled a couple of plugs and I checked them with my spark plug gap tool and they were the correct gap at between 32 and 35 thousandths of an inch. And the plugs look pretty good. You can tell a lot by a plug. If you look at a plug and it's gray or brown around the electrode, that's good. If it's oily black, that's not good. Um, if it's uh, black and sooty and smells like gasoline, um, that usually means you're running rich or that spark plug may not be firing. So anyway, checking a couple of spark plugs on this side, I found they were in good shape. Didn't see anything obvious wrong with the spark plug wires. Um, so then what I did was I started the car, got it running, and then I lifted each of these connectors off so that it would only be running on seven cylinders. And by doing that and working my way around, I found that one of them didn't make any difference, which meant that that cylinder wasn't getting spark. So whether it was connected or not connected, it didn't make any difference in how the engine ran. And the one that was the problem was this one over here on this side. So when I pulled it out, I found that in the rubber boot on the end, there was a good sized crack. So I think it was jumping over to the exhaust manifold here with the spark and not going through the plug. So you can probably see I put some black electrical tape around it just temporarily till I could get some new uh, spark plug wires and then it ran like a champ. Um, so I can show you now. We'll go ahead and start it and you'll see that it's hitting on all cylinders and there's no surge. way better than it was before and um, I can kind of give you an indication of what it's like if one cylinder isn't uh, firing. You have to have something insulated so you don't get shocked. Notice the change in RPM. Fired on all eight. Now we only got seven. And you can use that to isolate where your problem is. And that's what I did in this case. Okay, so then the last thing that I did was went down to Napa Auto Parts and I got a new set of spark plug wires um, exactly made for this. They're not uh, universal, one size fits all because each of these spark plug wires is a different length. The whole box, including the coil wire, uh, was about $35. That's the other good thing about owning an old American car like a Ford like this, is the parts are readily available and they're fairly cheap. So try to do it yourself. Go through that systematic process of elimination and see if you can figure it out yourself and go ahead and try it. And uh, even if you don't have a, a V8 or an old car, the surging problem, the same technique would be used to figure out why it's happening. Okay, so here's my new uh, Napa spark plug wires that I'm going to install. Um, bought them yesterday and total price $36.45. So that's about $4 of spark plug wire. Not bad. And um, I'll put these in and they're supposed to be exact match. So um, thanks for watching. And uh, good luck to you and any work you may be doing on your vehicle. And um, do what you can, buy good tools, and I'll talk to you next time.